This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I are playing the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is Ties That Bind. It was written by Tom Lynch, and it's from the Doors to Darkness. It's available from drive Through RPG. Keith Craig is our keeper of arcane lore, and this is episode one. But before we begin, I am very happy to say that we just passed our 300th scenario title that we've posted. That's 1,400 episodes, uh, or with many of them running two to four hours, it's around 3,000 entertainment hours for you to watch. We don't monetize and we don't charge our club members. Our online presence is mostly supported by our generous contributions from our Patreons and from Super Thanks. Our deepest gratitude for all of your help in keeping us going and helping us to improve our show. So, without any further delays, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Keith? All right. Great intro there, Tom. All right. Arkham, Massachusetts. April 7th, 1924. The uh, private investigating company of Eckerd and Higgins has been uh, requested by the local, in modern terms, Karen of the town. Enid Carrington has requested them to come out, to once again come out and assist her on another probably pointless and trivial investigation she's always wondering who walked across her grass who maybe uh smashed a bug on a on her car windshield and it's generally nature took care of that for them however this time she says that she's informed that it is serious there's been a vandalism at her her second home that is being built and there's some strange rocks and if she they could please bring in experts because of course them being pis they could not be possibly be educated enough to handle this we will join our investigators as they are pulling up to the dear Mrs. Carrington's estate that is in the process of being rebuilt for the third time in the past decade. Jesus Christ, Sam, if we didn't have bills, I would right. turn this job down. I, I mean, know. seriously, this lady is just, oh. She's nuts. But the thing is, we walk around, we put on a good show of it, we make our money, and uh, it'll be nothing. I mean, it sure beats getting stabbed or poked at in the slums. Well, that's true. That's true. I mean, her jobs tend to be kind of easy, but geez, she's just a pain in the ass. Uh, she is, but but like you said, she does pay. Uh, it's, keeps the lights on. <laughs> Well, nothing else. I'm sure we'll get a good story out of it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, rocks. Rocks, yes. Well, thankfully, the professor was able to oblige us, uh, Professor Hilliard, and uh, I don't I don't see their vehicle around. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're running late. They might have stopped for breakfast or who knows, gas or, or something. Or they're holding us, holding back to let us do the... Uh, introductions and uh get things rolling with enid yeah honestly the less we can expose them to her the better off they will like us and about when you said uh say that you see on the uh very familiar gaunt of enid she's about in her uh mid 50s uh 
looks like she's very prim and proper. Probably the hardest labor she's ever had to do was count her bank rolls. And she uh, she comes out and she's like, well, you finally arrived. She's like, I swear, I must have called you at least 30, 40 minutes ago. She's like, the police will have nothing to do with it. They say they've got to deal with people being robbed. Well, I was robbed. I paid for a fountain. And now it's look, just look at it. It looks looks horrible. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love Smash Marble. Yeah. Don't don't over we got this. We got yes, ma'am. We we're here. There's no reason to panic. We'll have a look around. Oh, good, good. She's like, I I'm a little suspicious of the work workmen, you know, unsavory bunch. You know, I think oh. some some of them oh. might even be part of I think it's called a union communist plot. Oh, I'm gosh. sure. Absolutely. I've heard all about the crazy kind of things they come up with. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, did, didn't you bring any of the educated people with you? No. Yeah. We, we, yeah. We, we call them. They're, they're on their way. Um, they're, they're coming by themselves. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I understand that. Uh, you know, they're probably you know uh, writing papers about how we should support Roosevelt, or you know, but he was voted out of office. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, I mean, c- come along, come along. <laughs> both detectives are trying to totally keep it together and not not <laughs> betray any any other motion that might indicate our interest <laughs> in her <laughs> problems we'll say about when you start kind of walking uh uh along so the uh the house you know it's a beautiful old house but she just keeps remodeling it over and over again uh because she's uh bored with a lot of money uh you can see there is a lot of scaffolding on the outside and you do see a construction crew kind of uh working on it but in the foreman uh, he looks up and, and greets you and about that time the uh are the professors and grad students riding in one vehicle I think I probably have Wallace driving my long paneled car. Yeah. Uh, about that time, you guys pull up uh, to this uh, large house. So I'm, I'm surprised, Professor. Uh, we're out here on Hill Street. Uh, this is a swanky neighborhood. Uh, uh, has this person got some sort of rock collection that they want us to look at? We're uh, a hobby for a. Yeah, did the PIs say why they needed us here? Uh, I, they weren't. I, I don't think they know themselves exactly what the uh, issue is, but there are rocks involved, and I have uh, actually assisted them uh, in the past. Uh, there were uh, footprints in unusual clay that was uh, that I helped them identify. It turns out it was from well up the coast. There's a, a cove with an unusual silicate pl- clay deposit. Oh, so wow! Uh, it was industry. You know, it was an interesting uh, little study in something out of the ordinary. Were they like dinosaur footprints, or? Oh no, no! It was a robbery. Um, but the, oh, oh, cool. the, the criminals had come from out, out of the way, uh, and we managed to locate them. It was a novelty. Oh, That's here awesome. it is! Wow! Yeah, this, yeah. it looks like there's work being done on the property. There's a. Whoosh. Big yard oh. fountain. Um, um, yeah, this Carrington woman is very well off. Along local family, she's an awful person. I'm just like, I heard she's new money. Old family, new money. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, we're parked. They're, they're here already. Yes, that's their car. I'll uh, hop out quickly and run over to Theodora's car and oh, open door and open it. Frank, Thanks, looks Wallace. like the, looks like they're here. Oh, good. Brought good. some students. I kind of feel bad for them. It's like lambs to the slaughter. Uh well, we'll we'll just have to run interference for him. Okay. 
All right. So uh, the uh, I assume the professor and geolo geology students uh, come over. Um, how are you dressed? Uh, probably typical suit. I mean, not okay. mm -hmm. not like a professional suit, but you know, school. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got it. You still dressed. Not not wealthy, but dressed. You know. Right. Professionally, at least. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, uh, okay. cut. right. Oh, yeah. you come she can on. she can tell by my shoes that you know I'm not right some starving artist type professor. Okay, when we come over. She kind of uh, uh looks at you. She she looks at the uh, Theodore and Wallace, and she kind of uh, looks you up and down. And despite how well you dress uh she is used to being around much nicer suits and she kind of sniffs a little and she goes uh i assume these are the experts uh sam professor yeah. hilliard yeah. madam nice to meet you oh it's a lovely house so uh, one of several uh, i believe yes 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 you know this is uh this is uh, my uh, second second home I have here in Arkham. You know, it's getting uh, getting ridiculous. You know, it's getting to where a person can't maintain multiple homes anymore. You know, what is this country coming to? These are the times we live in. Well, good to see you again, Professor Hilliard. Thank you for coming. Certainly, Sam. Very. Uh, these are Wallace and Theodora, among my more, more advanced students. I thought they'd uh, like something unusual. Wallace Parker. Hey, very nice. Ah, to meet you. nice to meet you, Theodore Marsh. Uh, well, I'm I'm uh, glad we're going to get to the bottom of uh, bottom of this. She's like, come 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 this way. Uh, it's a it's a round back where the uh, the vandalism took place. It's uh it's shocking. Prepare yourself. When you go around back, you see uh, a couple of the workers. They were kind of sitting around smoking, and when they come around, when she comes around the corner, you know, you know they kind of drop their cigarette and they look like they're getting getting back to work. And there, you see three of them standing next to a uh, a, a very well built shed with a steel door, and it looks like they are just standing on guard. Mm -hmm. But up ahead, you see a fountain. It's about 60 feet across. Uh, the there was, It looks like there was a pedestal for a statue, but you can see that the statue has been knocked over. It has uh, shattered and, uh, and, and broken. And she goes, here it is. That's what the Cretans left, this mess of in the water of my fountain. I had the men remove it so they could get right to work on the repairs. But of course, then they, uh, they imply that maybe I might want to call in someone to help find who did it. And so we've kind of left it alone. They did remove the rocks that were uh, left behind. I assume it was some kind of joke by these, uh, by these vandals. Uh, this is what happens when you, uh, say children can't go into mines anymore. You know, they suddenly have a lot of free time and uh they harass the good folks of society he's like going but um i'm not here to tell you how to how to do your business just, uh i'll just uh step out of the way for you and let you have a have a look thank you ma'am we appreciate that uh we'll be sure to inform you if uh, we have any questions oh thank you thank you you're a good man that's why i always call you we're grateful to have your clientele. Hmm. It's been in the mine. <laughs> the um the fountain and broken statue are marble. Uh, uh it's like Carrera marble. Yep. Yep. They they are marble. Uh if you have um uh, an appraise is that a Cthulhu skill? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. You can give me an appraise on that. Above my pay grade, but it's an awfully big piece of stone to ship across the ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's probably from right. Italy, uh, Carrera, Italy. Um, yeah. 
from the style, I'd say it's probably, you know, some sort of Italian, what, uh, Venus or Hercules or David. Yeah, you kind of looking at it, it was probably, it depicted a young boy standing on a giant shell while holding a dolphin, and the dolphin was the part that ah. was spitting out the water. So it might be Greek. Even. Mm-hmm. It wasn't one of the peeing ones. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a pure white marble that it yeah. was made out. So really expensive. That's gonna be a lot to to replace months probably before she can get a replacement for it. Mm-hmm. Well stonework like that too. I mean it might be to some extent irreparable, but or irreplaceable, but perhaps it can be repaired by a, a skilled stone mason. How badly damaged is the statue? So the uh, statue, which, you know, is, uh, it was life size. So, you know, it's a large statue. Statue. Uh, it is broken into uh, three pieces. Yeah, you know, when it was knocked over, the the head was knocked off because, you know, the neck's kind of a part sure. and then like uh the leg the right leg broke off because mm-hmm. the left leg was he was kind of balancing the dolphin on it so it's got a little bit more structure to it well if they're clean breaks maybe as professor hilliard said it'll be easier to repair get someone from the art department to <laughs> see if they can fix it is there any more damage to the fountain itself i uh, Yes, there is. So as you kind of uh, look around at the fountain, the rim is uh, cracked and chipped in two places about four feet apart. And then you see uh, eight parallel gouges running along the bottom of the fountain, varying from between one foot and three foot in length. Gouges, like... Mm -hmm. Like from a tool or like, uh, you know, if uh, I imagine like if you had uh, sand and you took a like a stick and you just ran it through the sand, that line that would oh. be left behind, except this is all, all going the same direction. I uh, doubt you would need to make maybe a uh, some of your geology role there to kind of see, hey, is the scrapes going the right way? Um. Yeah, I mean, I what is my geology again? Uh, that's a uh, hard. Yes, yes, they are. It definitely looks like it came from, that uh, they they started from the east and um, ran toward the west, but they were definitely all going in the same way because of how some of the sand. But almost the... like an impact crater from the rocks. Well, um, I'm going to turn to one of the workmen. Where are the rocks? Uh, when you say that, and they go, go oh, uh, Miss Carrington had us lock, it, lock them up in the shed. She thought uh, they were quite pretty and they might be valuable. And as she put it, she could recover from this travesty. Sounds like Mrs. Carrington. <laughs> what do you think, we- Frank? Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to look around. See if we can find like tire tracks or something, maybe. Something like that, maybe yeah, footprints. Yeah. So if the way yeah. these work crews are coming and going, I mean, there's a good chance that most of it's them already. But that's true. I mean, uh, I, I'll probably go talk to them. Just yeah. ask them about the. See what the feeling is. See if there, maybe there's a chance that some of them are getting a little tired of the mem's kind of high attitude and. I wonder if this could have been one of the workers acting out or something like that. But yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe it was a, a one of the unioners that she was talking about. Yeah, yeah, but um, if if you don't mind me, I mean, from observation, all the gouges are going in the same direction. If this was a bunch of college kids that were throwing rocks, wouldn't they be coming from different directions? The um, chaos, right? Yeah. Are the are the gouges pointing back towards the road, or uh, no? So where where did they come from? 
Well, I'm wondering right. if it, it looks a little bit like um, the, the, the passage of a, a thrown stone that skips over water, except, of course, marble is quite hard, water is quite soft. Does the, does the uh, direction of those uh, approach the, the cracks in the outer wall of the fountain? Mm. Like if it is it a line between the broken statue and the and the and the cracks yes. in the fountain as yes. if something mm. I almost feel like you know they, we we might have the great good fortune of finding a small meteorite that that's kind of what I was thinking or they they were fired out of a cannon they would have had to have really oh. been going to gouge the marble like this yeah, can we can we see the rocks yeah let's go in the shed yeah. i i think if you see that they're sharp edged or they've got really hard edges that could explain the chipping maybe yeah uh of course you of course you can um we were t we informed that there was going to be some uh people coming out to, to inspect this and that we were to only allow them into the shed to to see it do we know if there were any other folks on site at the time of this? Were were there crews working elsewhere on the property? Um, if there was, they uh, they were working off hours, and uh, I highly doubt that any of my construction crew was uh, working off hours for Mrs. Carrington. Mm. Well, right. and this this wouldn't have been quiet damage like this. No, or impact. If, if they were meteorites, you'd think there would have been a sonic boom. Well, I'm surprised if they're if we think they're meteorites. I'm surprised there's no impact aside from these gouges. Well, instead of hitting soft yeah. earth, that hit a, you know a heavy stone. I wouldn't expect more than one, and perhaps the object broke up. I mean, it would yeah. have to be a, a small thing, to, but you know, just large enough to make landfall, relatively small. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, what's the foreman's name? Should we, should we uh, George. Yeah. Yes, George, if you'd show us these carefully guarded. Oh, of of course, of course. He's like, uh, come this way. He comes along. He's like, uh, uh, Jim, Jim, these are the people that uh, Miss Carrington said that was going to uh, be uh, looking into the uh, the event, as uh, we'll call it. <laughs> he goes, uh, and Jim goes, oh, come along. <laughs> No, he gets out a, a key and the uh the steel door it's uh locked and then it's also got like a chain through the uh you know the handle he un undoes it pulls the chain out of the way he's kind of rolling his eyes as he's unlocking unlocking all this and he opens it opens it up and he's like going um he's like there's a there is a light switch in there and he kind of flips it for you so like comes on inside the shed you can see that there is um some wrought iron fencing <laughs> looks like it was uh going being ready to be uh stored he's also got uh some uh some of the worksman's tools and, and everything but uh jim points out and he's like going uh over there on the bench that's the uh the stones that uh were found in the uh fountain yeah, that's it. And over there, you you see there's a uh, you know how bananas are all kind of in a bunch and they're all connected up at the top. So there are seven stones that are all connected up at the up at the top. There, they are. Where is it uh, describe what they look like? Okay. Uh, they're they look like a bunch of one. Each one is a uh, translucent as a mother of pearl, and the stems that come up to attach to the, where they're bunched together looks like a, a blue granite colored coral. Well, I've never seen anything like this before. Oh, uh, so the rocks are all attached to one another? Yes. Oh, what what on earth? Not what I expect. Frank, you better come in and have a look at this. Okay. I'd like to get a closer are look they one. crystalline? Professor? Are they sharp edged and crystallized crystals. 
they're almost like a uh, you know a little fatter at the top and skinnier at the bottom almost like you know that like you know how a valentine's heart is but it doesn't have right. the top <laughs> um smooth or rough. uh yes they are smooth but the corally bit i assume is not smooth right mm-hmm it's not properly speaking multiple rocks then it's one rock that is shaped a bit like a um, very peculiarly colored almost octopus Why how large is this one solid mass uh each rock is about you know a little bit bigger than your head and so and then there's seven of them so it's wow. it's it's large why didn't it shatter when it hit the ground? Well, that's a good... Uh, well, that's the first thing, of course, you'll want to do a scratch test to determine the hardness. The most hardness. And, yeah, yeah, and I'm assuming that the, it must be a metamorphic object because the two components seem so different in texture. Well, George, how many of your boys did it take to carry this thing in here? Oh, we had a, a couple of us. It was... Uh, well, George went back, so we'll say Jim. Jim, 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 yeah. Jim goes, oh, uh, it was me, my my buddy uh, Alf, Alfred, and uh, a Bob over there. We 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 hauled hauled it in. Is it really heavy? I say it, to them, it is. Um, when we uh, when we carried it in, one of them one of them snapped off though. So like up up at the top, it's a little fragile, right. I guess, for less less of a word. Do we have that one that snapped off? Could we uh, get the professor here to have a look at it? There might be something telling from the inside of it. Um, he kind of looks around and he's like, "Hmm." The last person I saw with it was Alfred. I told him to set it down, but I don't see it around anywhere. Oh, is 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 Mrs. Carrington around? No, she's uh. Okay, and I'll be like um. <clears throat> Let's just keep this between us right now. So as far as the Miss Carrington is concerned, everything is here. Um, oh, you mean the missing piece? Yeah, okay. Yeah, because we don't want her wrath, honestly. Uh, so I'm going to do a Mose test on one of these things mm -hmm. um, and see how hard it is. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, as a, uh, met metagame, I have no idea what that entails. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you've, you've got a little tester and you, you basically try to scratch okay. the rock. Mm -hmm. And if the rock scratches, then your, your tester is harder. Okay. And I got gotcha. It goes all the way from graphite up to diamond, which is. The gotcha. Hardest. Gotcha. Okay. If it scratches diamond, then it's harder than diamond. Okay. I, uh, I follow you now. All right. Uh, so when you uh, do that, um, when you get up to like, you know, like the hardness of like a uh, nail file, it okay. can scratch the surface. Okay. We'll say around like a corundum or something, a, a, a ruby. Mm -hmm. It's no. it's hard, but it's not a ten. It's maybe an eight and a half or a nine. So, do you think that's hard enough to have made those scrapes? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and marble, marble's really soft by comparison. And still, the thing that's structurally so strange, you'd think if it would smash a couple of pieces off a marble statue, well, again, and then it broke when they were carrying it. Yeah, that's, that's, a, odd. that's a, Yeah. Unless it got, like, heat fractures when it... it I, gee, I don't know that this is a meteorite, but I can't... I can't fathom why it didn't just explode when it hit the ground. Uh, right. I yeah. It's 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 not a stable structure. Very odd. It also I, seems like a very strange tool to use to vandalize someone's yeah. fountain, no matter how unpleasant she is. You just bring a sledgehammer and knock the head off the statue. Does that? Uh, I have read a fair amount of history. Does the boy holding a dolphin in a clamshell? 
Does that signify anything in ancient mythology? Isn't that usually one of Zeus's I mean, boyfriends or something? That... Venus comes out of a clamshell. That's the only thing that immediately comes to mind. Zeus tended to like pretty boys and pretty girls. I hate to break it to you, but uh, Miss Carrington has a, another fountain with a, another couple statues at her main residence. I I doubt she's placed much value in this beyond just pure aesthetics and showing off yeah. for her fancy friends. It's a water spirit. Uh, Aquarius, maybe? Mm. Hmm. I would love to take get this back to the university to do some further testing on yeah. it. Although I doubt she'll part ways with it as a donation. So no, well, if we can find that uh, piece. Exactly. She yeah, may not no. need to know. Hey, Jim. Uh is Jim here with us still? Yes. No, yeah. Jim's with us. Yeah. Um, Jim, so who did you say had this piece? Alfred. Alfred. Uh, Alfred. Is, he, is he around? We can talk to him. Well, let me go, go, go ask uh, the foreman. Go ask George. All right. I think we're going to need to track down Alfred, see if we can get that rock. Uh, one of us, unfortunately, might need to talk to Enid and get a few more details. Hmm. But okay, weird. maybe she'll let us take it to the, you know, if we promise to give it back to her. Or we could say it's arsenic or something. We'll name yeah, the geology is, wing after be. her if it leads to significant discovery. <laughs> I mean, for all we know, it's radioactive. I think the only way you're going to get her to part with it, if it's if you can find a way to convince her, it somehow signifies poorness or <laughs> lack of society, or or it's just danger. But perhaps, yeah. This is last year's her, rock. Dangerous. The new ah. rock is. <laughs> <laughs> after a bit of time, uh, Jim comes back and he's like. Um, uh, the foreman said that uh, that Alfred uh, took off. Uh, he's taking the the rest of the day off. He wasn't feeling good. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. Okay. You know, you got, where, the, uh, got an address for him. Yes, yeah. I do. It is the uh, four eighty eight West High Lane on the north side. You know, as we're literally just talking about uh, tossing around the word radiation, that uh, makes me a little bit nervous if we're all in here with this. Maybe we should be keeping a little further distance from this thing. Did we, uh, by any chance, bring a Geiger counter? Give me we a luck probably, roll. Probably didn't expect something like that, but we might. Uh, I got a 30. Is that a 3? Is that a 3? It's a 30. 35, 36. Okay. And it might be, it's hard to read the dice sometimes. Got it's 80. Yeah. Um, pass. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was luck, right? Yes, yep. that's a pass. Uh, yeah. As luck would have it, you do have a, a Geiger counter. I'll get Still the in the trunk counter. of the car. Yeah. And that other thing. <laughs> Excellent. Well, well Geiger counter. Mm hmm. Um, when you run back and get it, you bring it back. Um, it's not not radioactive. Uh, nothing radioactive. That's good. Good to know. That's more in your department, Frank. Sam. Maybe Alfred wasn't feeling poorly, but he wanted to run off to some pawn shop because he thought the leg uh, that broke off was valuable. That's a pretty good thought. Yeah. I mean, it's a very exotic looking specimen. Why don't know? Theodora, could it, could it be volcanic? Like volcanic glass or something. You're the well, volcanist. And because the, the two components are fused, it has to be metamorphic, I should think. Um Keeper, should we roll our specialities about identifying sure. these stones? Sure. This complex stone. Mm-hmm. All right. 18 out of 70. Um math, yeah. math, math. That's a hard that is not far from an extreme. Okay. And as you're examining this, the people that are examining it can give me a listen. 
No. Oh, okay. 93. Ooh. Okay. Um, so uh, the pass on the geological, uh, this is not any stone that you are familiar with. It's not volcanic, at least as far as I can tell. Right. Not a recognized object. All right. Well, it's... we'll need to convince the lady of the house that it's dangerous and we should take it for further study. Um, and then because it's, uh, or do we, um, you know her better than I do, gentlemen. Um, what should we tell the old bag? Tell her it might be dangerous. Tell her it's it radioactive. The Thank Geiger you. counter's going off the charts. It's radioactive and dread dreadfully out of fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, <clears throat> we can certainly try. Yeah. Yeah. Good. One of the foremen left. Sick. Classic symptoms of uh, radiation exposure. Right. One of the workers. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'd like to get, take a chip. Of, I mean, we've been great. Is is the is the is it evident where the piece broke off? Is there a yeah place now it looks fractured? Yep. Yeah. So you know, again to go back to my banana analogy, you know, when you break a banana off the bunch, you can kind of go, oh, hey, there was one there before. <laughs> yeah. Do the does the mother of pearl and the and the blue that is not translucent? What's the juncture like does it is there a gradual change from translucent to not yes. or does it seem like they were stuck together with a blob of blue no it looks like uh there's a it quickly transitions but it's enough that they're kind of blended together that it is one piece it was not uh I want, glued together it almost looks organic like uh like it grew this way as a crystal I'm wondering if this isn't an art object oh. of some kind. Oh, man. I don't know how it got here, but you know, people make decorative glass, and they have all kinds of ways to affect the the translucence and the and whatnot. One thing is clear, and that's that this isn't a casual act of vandalism, or at least not what she thought it was. So, you know, gentlemen, there is no indication that some teenagers came here and threw an art object very hard at the lady's sculpture. Uh, maybe it could be ceramic of some sort. You know, there's well, been experiments um, in very hard ceramics. Yep. Or any craftsperson in town who could create something like this, maybe? I doubt it. You, you'd have to go to a big university, maybe, to find somebody who yeah. could put this material together. Yeah, I'm an a bit of an amateur sculptor myself, and I don't recognize anything materially, but I think you're right. In the glass and ceramic family, properties can be adjusted with the addition of mineral salts and different temperatures create different effects. Why would somebody sculpt an abstract oddity like this and then drop it in some rich woman's Greek fountain. Throw it. Yeah. Or hurl it. Yeah. yeah. There's no liquid in the fountain yet, right? They were just putting uh, stuff together. Yeah, probably like, you know, if there's like some rainwater or something, but yeah, yeah, it hadn't been filled yet. Frank, I noticed earlier you were taking some photographs. Yes. Yeah, I was taking some photographs of uh, various things, you know, these rocks, the statue outside, kind of my standard procedure for documenting a case. I tell her that in order to find out who did this, we need to figure out what this is and where it came from. And so that's a really good reason to take it. Okay. It's evidence. Um, on to the yeah. professor's point, I'm wondering if there's not an art museum that's also missing a piece mm -hmm. sitting here. There's some pretty weird stuff in Arkham. 
Yeah, I'm just kind of baffled about this whole yeah. scenario. I mean, these these things don't seem like they go together, actually. Yeah, yeah. Frank, all summer she's been calling us out here every second weekend. We've done everything from Man. looking for tracks in the road to an attempted break-ins. None of it's come through. Oh, and yeah. She had us, she, the, there was the complaints about the overlapping clouds. Oh, what the hell were we going to do about that? <laughs> this is the oh, yeah. first. And you remember the time that she brought us out here and, and it turned out to be that, that there was like litter? Uh, and we had to pick up the litter. I mean, just she's and we've checked out every teenager in the surrounding area. Like all of them are perfectly fine kids. So I don't think it's a neighbor. I'm I'm no detective, Mr. Higgins or Mr. Eckhart, but I don't think she's married. Maybe she's got the hots for you. <laughs> uh uh, just very, very needy, but I don't think this is that. This this seems like something actually going on here. What well, you gentlemen, um, you, you know, you're more accustomed to thinking in terms of trajectories of force and that sort of thing than I am. If we think that that thing hit the statue and then bounced and hit the edge of the fountain what's at the direction that it would have come from where somebody would have had to catapult the thing or some such is that on her property is there is it part of her house what's what's in that direction oh okay um well if you just look to the uh in the direction that it came from, obviously, uh, across the street, there is a another house, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's in the wealthier part of town. So it's kind of, uh, you know, away from the businesses and all. If you keep going in that direction, you'll actually get more out into the wilderness. So maybe a couple blocks over it would be the wilderness, but, you know, it's really a neighborhood. You didn't hear anything. Well, she's probably not living here while the work is done. Oh, that's true. I'm assuming it happened at night, and then, yeah, we you could know, we could ask the the foreman if if one of the workers was the first to see the damage. Um, if it was night, maybe we could ask some of the neighbors. Most definitely, if this came from outer space, then it made a a loud yeah. sonic boom well, it, yeah, it, it, would have, it would have whistled probably it would have made a, a, a racket bomb. when it hit the fountain so yeah maybe the... it wouldn't be a bad idea to have somebody kind of walk the grounds of the neighboring estates as well just to look to see if there's any other scatter okay. i do think we got to track down alfred sooner than later but uh if we could give you folks an opening to uh get this specimen off to the university we'll try to do that as uh why don't we just take it and put it in the car it's, well it's we don't want to we don't want to get anyone in trouble well it's it no i mean she's she bothered to have it locked up like that it's 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 easier to say we're sorry than to say <laughs> <laughs> to ask permission to ask <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, she's hardly going to come to the university and give me a hard time, it's true, but I would feel some compunction if George were to lose his job over our sneaking off with her special rock. Absolutely. Uh, oh. and the first thing is to see if Alfred took it with him. So we should look on the immediate grounds to see if the missing leg is here. Uh, and I assume Frank and Sam, you're good at asking neighbors nosy questions, and they probably all hate the old... <clears throat> Mrs. Carrington, uh, and would be annoyed or happy to make a complaint about a loud noise. Uh, I'll go and maybe Miss Marsh, you're pleasant. You could come with me and talk to Mrs. Carrington about how we need to remove the thing for analysis. Okay, Professor, we can do that. Right. Just watch Miss Marsh. You don't want to make eye contact too long. <laughs> All right. So, and uh, what was Wallace doing? I'm I'm gonna try to pick it up myself and see how heavy it is. 
Give me a strength roll. Uh, 39 out of 50. Okay. Uh, yeah, you've, uh, taken some good PE classes, you know, to lift with your legs, not your back in a jerking, twisting motion. You are able to, uh, lift it up and it, you know, it's probably 60, 70 pounds, you know, but it's, it's awkward as the as it's awkward, thing. Right. Yeah. You know, like if it had handles, you know, 60, 70 pounds, that's heavy, but it's doable. Whereas this is like, so it would be easier for two people to. Oh to yes. Yes, definitely. Okay. 60, uh, 70 pounds. See- from its largest diameter from the head to one of the tips is three feet. Yeah, I'd buy that. Yep. That's yep. really big. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I assume you set it back down? Yeah, I'll set it back down. Give me a luck roll. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, 43 out of 50. Okay. You set it down, no problem. I, actually, uh, I didn't roll for luck. So oh. I assume 50, <laughs> but I usually assume 50. Yeah, that sounds fine. Okay, we'll go to uh, Frank and Sam uh, going around talking to neighbors. Yeah, I think we'll head across the street and hit that other big estate first. Okay. Um, when you knock on the door, a uh, woman in her uh, upper 30s, maybe her lower 40s, she opens the door and she's like, uh, yes, yes, may I help sure. you? Yes, uh, no sir. solicitors. Oh, no, no, ma'am. We're not solicitors. Um, my Frank Higgins. This is my partner, Sam Eckert. We're private investigators. Oh. Um, <clears throat> we're investigating some uh, vandalism over at the uh, Carrington estate. And um, oh, vandals, huh? Yeah. Um, and we were curious to know, did did you hear any anything last night? Uh, any sort of loud noise? Oh yeah, uh, it was about. It woke me up. I re- I remember that, and it was probably about one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. I heard this loud crash, and then uh, I I assumed a tree branch fell down because I heard this like squawking, you know, like a like a bird, like a the bird's oh. nest fell down. There was a a loud squawking sound, and. Uh, I looked outside. I didn't see any uh, strange vehicles. And uh, my husband, he went out and uh, walk, walked around the house. No, no damage was there. And uh, so we assumed it wasn't any of our trees. But it was a vandal, huh? Someone yes. chopping down someone's trees? No, it wasn't a tree. It was actually a, uh, a fountain statue uh, oh. that was broken. Oh, uh, yeah. well, that's a shame. Now, you haven't noticed anything else suspicious in these parts lately? Oh, no. I mean, you know, we got uh, some uh, some uh, blue-collar people over there working on her estate, but, I mean, that's to be expected when you're, when you're remodeling. Yeah. Okay. No, you haven't had any similar occurrences on your property? Oh, heavens no. No, of course not. Okay. We had. I, I would have uh, called the police immediately. Yeah. Would you be opposed to us having maybe a quick look around your backyard? Oh no, that that'd be be fine. Would you like some tea? Well, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. That'd be okay. excellent. All right. I'll meet you. Uh, um, I'll have the uh, the maid bring out some iced tea to the backyard for you. <laughs> okay. When you go into the backyard, uh. There's nothing, nothing there. The tea is quite wonderful. But yeah, there's nothing going on back there. Jeez, Frank, we should have been coming over here. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, the hospitality is much better over here. Well, that uh, closes off that angle. Yeah. Uh, I think it's got to be Alfred next. Yeah, that seems to be the next clue we got. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll just have to leave the, the rock analysis to the experts. Yeah. 
they can get it back to the university and have a look. Yeah, hopefully so. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Theodore and Professor Maxwell, you guys were going to go talk to uh, the lovely Mrs. Carrington. Yes. Uh, when you're going, uh, approaching the uh, the house, you see a car pull up. And a young woman gets out. She looks about uh, maybe a little younger than Theodora. Um, and she uh, goes walking, walking right into the house. Like, it's obvious that she is uh, very familiar with being here. Family resemblance to Enid? Yep. Mm-hmm. Poor thing. Uh all right, well, that's good. We could just sort of coattail her into the house. If she didn't ring the bell and just walked in, then we don't, we can skip formalities. Okay. She will be intercepted quickly enough. Oh, well, uh, when you come in, you hear, hear uh, the woman talking to Enid. She's like going, uh, she's like, uh, one of the uh, workers here apparently has been watching me. And he goes, well, which one? I'll have him fired immediately. She's like, no, no, no. He, he wrote a very flattering note and fl- flattering note. And, uh, you know, he, but he, he said he's wanting to meet up later on. And I'm just looking for some motherly advice for this. She's like going, never date below your class. Always date up. She goes, I, I hear that the, uh, the there's a new family in Massachusetts uh, that could could new could uh, use uh, someone lovely like you, and that's when she notices. She's like, "Oh, uh, yes, may may I help you?" Uh, part of the intrusion, uh, Mrs. Carrington. Um, uh, the uh, the investigators are uh, moving around the neighborhood looking for any sort of witnesses. Do you happen to know who? was the first to see the destruction she's like uh one of the workers um uh, i don't know their names i deal with uh the the foreman who uh i call mister right so it was it was the foreman that brought your attention to it yes yes he uh he called me up at my uh my uh, primary residence and i uh came over here immediately and that was uh, how early this morning? Oh, it was at a dreadful, god awful hour of uh, eight thirty. Mm. Yeah, so you were disturbed from your morning routine. Mm-hmm. Well, the the rock or rocks um, pose a a bit of a conundrum. Uh, we don't know where they came from. They don't seem to be. Uh, Ms. Marsh can back me up. They're not a recognized geological object. I think it's some sort of artwork or other man-made thing. Artwork? Which, well, uh, not to my taste, certainly. I Mine also oh. runs classical. Uh, yes, yes. I mean, I believe that it's not art if it doesn't look like something that doesn't exist in the real world. Besides that, I mean, any any 12 year old can scribble on a on a piece of paper yeah, not just a real thing but a real thing of beauty like the statue that was broken exactly yes is, yes is that is that by a named artist i didn't recognize the work but of course it's in a shambles oh it's made by one of those and she uses a racial slur for an italian <laughs> right Yes, well, uh, I'd like to take the object away to the university and see if I could determine where it was made, because if we can figure that out, then we have a better chance of finding out who chucked it into your property. Do you have any objection to us removing it to the university? Oh. We can have it back after if you want it. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, when it shows up, at your property is kind of yours, right? You know, like broadly speaking, it, it was left behind here by a trespasser, uh, or yeah. it just fell out of the sky. Uh, give me a persuade or a fast I'm, talk. 
Okay, I'm more charming than oh, I am. Charming. Okay. Uh, yeah. Give me a uh, charming. You've been kind of saying words that she likes, so we'll say that a regular what is what you'll need. <laughs> well, I put my foot on it somehow because I have a a whopping forty five in charm and a yeah. ninety two. Oh, so I probably winced when so, she slurred. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like that or you uh you mentioned some obscure politician that has uh, offended her <laughs> even without even knowing it. and she's like well uh no i think i'll, I'll just keep it here you're of course uh, are are welcome to uh view them in the uh in the shed at any time during the day that's very oh, that's... kind of you mrs carrington in the the dozens of students and faculty members traipsing across your yard. They'll be very grateful, too, because, of course, we're going to need to bring in Ooh. all of the experts from the university to see. Oh, that. oh I like that. Uh, I'll let you choose. Uh, it's like a it seemed like a fast talk, but I know a lot of people don't put stuff in fast talk. So I'll, I'll let you pick uh, maybe an, an intimidate or a hard persuade. <laughs> I'll go with persuade. Okay. Uh, but I'm, my size is like 45. Right? I'm the least intimidating person in this group. Oh, God. Oh, one. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, them traping, traping seen across her lawn is just like she almost goes goes white and she's like oh she, she's like Ma mary help, help me out she's like oh oh maybe maybe you're right uh uh, uh Matt, miss uh yes uh can i can i at least get a signed receipt of course yeah. oh, oh, oh thank you and uh wallace with the uh you trying to kind of Get that out there. Give me another uh, a strength uh, roll there as you try and get it into a wheelbarrow. Yeah, I tried to get George to help me, but he wouldn't. So, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I passed my strength. Okay, so yep. I just you put it into a wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if he's not going to help me, then I'm just going to try wheeling it out towards yeah. the, the yeah. vehicle. Hey, uh, I still he wasn't going to help you, keys. but but you kind of he's kind of go, hey, uh, just wait till I go around the front. That way I can say I didn't see it. All right. <laughs> and goes around. And about that time, uh, Theodore and Maxwell, you're coming out of the house. You see George coming around, and so you're coming. You're you're. And you see Wallace come out with his wheelbarrow with the, these stones in it. And Frank and Sam, uh, after the uh, lovely uh, tea and everything, if you were planning on coming back to uh, meet up with everyone else, we'll say we we'll kind of all merge back together in a. All right. Where would you like to go? Hey everyone, things uh things didn't pan out next door. We didn't find much, so I think Alfred's our next source of inquiry. I see uh Wallace got the got the rock collected here. Yeah, could you help me get this into the trunk? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um Mrs. Karen had required a receipt. Sorry. Uh, of course I'm, she did. Did, did I they ever... hear anything? Did no. The neighbors hear anything? Oh yes, they did. Yes, they did. They uh heard a loud crash. Last night. Oh. One thirty time. time. One thirty and two. One thirty two. We should check with the astronomy department and see if we were like going through a a meteor shower or something oh, last night. See, the Perseids are in August, but there's little showers in between. Um, it's not the iron basket. either. So if it was iron, we wouldn't have been able to move it. It would have also just blown up the entire estate, probably, if it hit this size. Yeah, I feel um, now that it has to have been chucked from, you know, a, a few blocks away or something. I mean, I don't know who would build a catapult to throw an art object <laughs> at a mean woman. There was a there was an interesting uh, something she mentioned about the lady across the street mentioned about. She said there was some squawking. 
that was going on. Come to mind. She thought it was a bird's nest, right? Or something like that. And she thought it was a tree limb that or tree that had fell. We've seen nothing like that around here, so. Well, if it didn't make a big old sonic boom, then it wasn't traveling at particularly fast speed. What if it fell out of an airplane? Yeah. Could it have been an art object being transported in an airplane and it fell out of the airplane? It's it's possible. Maybe the as it fell, it took out a bird or something, or well, I don't know. But... Sometimes the things you hear, there's a lot of things that make a squawky noise. She said it sounded like a tree limb too. So yeah. I do think. Would it have come from space? We'd see a much bigger impact crater. Yeah, so. indeed. A fair plane idea, except for just the sheer unlikeliness of someone losing an art object. It doesn't ruin. I mean, it would it would be traveling at a velocity, so it would be falling, but also in a direction, so it could bounce and yeah. come up against. It's not the least. I reasonable thing we'll also have to try whacking the thing with hammers and see what maybe it makes a maybe it resonates in a way that could sound like a squawk to a sleepy neighbor mm. you know um in my chemistry class i remember the professor did a kind of an experiment he called it a prince rupert drop. oh the drop yes uh, and it was something that was made of glass, but you could put it on a an anvil and hit it mm. with a sledgehammer, and it wouldn't break. And it wouldn't break. That's right. But if, I remember. But the stem, if you broke just a little bit of the stem, it shattered. Yeah, high high tensile. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hollow ball of glass made in very particular circumstance with you know, remarkable tensile strength. Uh, and at this point, we've been a, in the backyard going back and forth. The, clearly, the missing piece has to be with Alfred. Yeah. Yeah. We, it's just not hiding in a tuft of grass. There's Everything's, you know, well I mean, there's, traveled. There's more physical dangers than radioactivity. I mean, crystalline arsenic is poisonous. Oh. Yeah, we'll have like, to be careful. We don't know what it, yeah, somebody better check up on that guy. It is too much coincidence between him going home and having been the person to take it. So, yeah, I think me and Frank will head that way if uh, the rest of you want to head back to the university. Yes. Uh, Frank, um, I'd appreciate copies of those photographs when you when you develop oh, them. Not a problem. See if we can trace anything. Maybe somebody who is more familiar with ballistics can figure out something about how fast things were moving and yeah. all that. Yeah, I can definitely drop these off uh, on our way to meet meet our guy, get them developed for you. Keeper, I, uh, there must be chunks of marble from the basin of the fountain as well. Mm -hmm. I'd like to just take one of those as a sample of for, for strength and so on, not a piece yeah. of the statue itself, because she'll be repairing that. But yeah, yeah, that'll be no problem. Uh, all right, uh, back to the university. Uh, we'll uh, no. speak later, gentlemen. Sounds good. If uh, perhaps we'll meet up after and maybe uh, hit a diner or something, and we can uh, tell your students about how you foiled a gang of robbers. Very <laughs> curious modus of operations. Well, thank you again, Professor. We we do appreciate your help with all this. Oh, it's a nice, you know, gets me out of the office. All right. Open the door for Theodora. Open the door for the Professor. Then come right. around and hop in. All right. We'll say that um, the for a time timeline there. That uh, she was awoken at uh, eight thirty. She would have. Uh, called you immediately after that and then you guys were probably here for you know an hour hour and a half so we'll say it's approaching about 11 30 in the morning 
Okay. Um, and you guys were headed back to Miskatonic U? Yeah. Okay. Um, when you get there, I mean, it's a beautiful campus. Uh, you know, it's uh, about a month out from finals, so a lot of the students are still uh, quite active. They're ba all back from spring break. Yep. Looks like a beautiful Ivy League college at uh, in April. <laughs> can we... Um... Can we get like uh, uh, uh astronomy professor and the uh, uh chemistry professor? Uh just tell them to come and have a look at this thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can. I'm just looking up uh who this guy teaches. Okay, what this guy teaches. All right. Okay. Yep. So you're getting an astronomy professor and a uh, chemistry professor. Sounds yeah. good. Uh, yeah. So we'll give me give me a group luck roll to see if they're uh, when their their uh, office my, hours are. My luck see. is fifty. I'm at seventy, so I think it's you, or sixty rather. I think it's you then. Right. Uh, ninety one. They're busy uh, yeah. in classes. Yeah, they're busy in classes until the afternoon. Yeah. Do we have I'll, any? Sorry, go ahead. I'll, I'll leave uh, uh, notes with secretaries and say I'd like to buy them lunch. Hmm. Uh, that'll increase the chance that we get both of them in a timely fashion. Okay. Can I can I get a hold of a couple of my buddies though that? Uh, like maybe on their lunch break, I'm like, dude, you gotta see this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say it. be sure you could do you could do that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna. Um, I guess I'll have a, a a lab room adjacent to my office where people come and do specific work, rather than the auditorium where uh, lectures are given. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll put the object in there. It shouldn't be too difficult. If uh, if Wallace and I carry it from the card yeah. into into the building, it is, doesn't. I can get a a, a small hand truck. It's yeah, just so we can make easy work of it. Yeah, yeah. Without the, any issue. It it doesn't. It's not warm to the touch or anything. No, it doesn't it has? It doesn't seem to have any. Nothing where the where the piece broke off again. You said it's it's blended together, mm -hmm. so there's a bit of beach in both. Is it? Does the fracture? Is it sharp? Or is it rough? Or rough. is it? We'll say it's more of a it, rough. Yeah. Is it possible right where the fracture is to chip off a little bit? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's okay. get a little yeah, piece of that under a microscope pieces. and see what it looks like. Do, do some chemical tests to see what it's made out of. Okay. All right. Sounds like the academics are going to kind of be doing some uh, yeah. academia. What are our uh, intrepid PIs going to be doing? We are going to track down Elford. Okay. All right. All right. Um, all right. We'll cut to uh, that. Let me turn to that page here. Tracking down Alfred. All right. Okay. So um, that address is uh, takes you to the Borden Arms Hotel in uh, Northside Arkham. It's a uh, is one of the play hotels that you know rent out rooms for the month and and stuff. So you would be kind of the places that workers that are just moving from uh, place to place to find jobs that's where they would be staying okay when you yeah. come come in you're kind of you're greeted by a uh, by the landlady what is her name uh, Dorothy so uh, she uh, she sees you and she's like oh uh, are you looking for a room no, just checking in on one of your tenants at the moment, uh, ma'am. Um, we're looking for Alfred. Alfred, to, Alfred. Last name. Oh, she's like, well, give me, give me a moment, moment to see who we have here. He's not in uh, trouble with the law, is he? 
Certainly not. Oh, good. Just, just a few quick questions about a uh, incident last night, and we'll be out of your hair. He goes, oh, uh, Mr. Hackett. Uh, yes, he is uh, up in uh, room uh, 303. Okay. Have you seen Mr. Hackett today? Mr. Hackett? Uh, yeah, he's uh, he left uh, this morning at his normal time, but he came back uh, much earlier than 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 usual, and then he uh, left uh, about an hour ago. Hmm. An hour ago, okay. Did um, did Mister Hackett uh, did he look ill or anything unusual about him? No, no, he he looked he looked fine. Okay. Okay. Was he alone at these periods? Oh yes, yes. He's uh, he's he. Uh, we I don't let uh, men bring uh, unmarried women back here. You know, mm. it's uh, not not tolerated in my establishment. Thank you, Dorothy. I understand. Um, it, it's it okay if we had a quick uh, look around his room? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, you can go 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 up. Do you have like some sort of ID or? Yeah. How about oh yes. And yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, go right. I'll I'll go up there and uh, open the door for you. So she uh she goes up the steps and she uh she unlocks it. It is like a uh, you know it's a just one room. It's not even an in suite. The uh, restrooms at down at the end of the hallway. Uh, but you know, there's a bed in there, and the one thing that is uh out of place that you would find there is a uh, a bucket sitting in the middle of the floor that's full of water. That's curious. You know, Dorothy, if you have any leaks or uh, if I did, he uh he is required to tell me about about a leak so I can get it get it addressed. Um, She's kind of like peeking. <laughs> I'll kind of uh, look down at the bucket, and does it have any odor to it? Uh, it does not. When you look down into the bucket, you can see that uh, there is a stone in the bucket, same size as the other ones, except for this one, where the other ones were more of a, uh, a Mother of Pearl translucent. This one is like a, uh, it seems like it's more milkier. The, the colors are, they're swirls and. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I'll um take my hand and kind of bump the bucket. Uh, okay. Just to see if that does anything. Yeah. Okay. We'll you know, maybe we should get you to take a quick picture, Frank, before we do anything yeah. further. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can definitely do that. But uh, looks like we found our our rock. Yeah, no, it's different than the others, though. Is that because of the water, or is that something that's unrelated to it? <laughs> don't know. I don't know much about rocks, honestly. <laughs> um, but I'll take a picture of it, uh, and. Uh, I'll turn to Dorothy and I'll say, um, uh, Mr. Hackett, is he, uh, does he owe money to anybody? Is he indebted that you're aware of? Uh, not that I'm aware of. He uh, pays his uh, rent on time. Okay. He says he has a good construction job. Yeah. Okay. And I'll, I'll kind of just go around and open like the side table drawer and just sort of look through the drawers and see if I can okay. find anything. Uh, you find a handwritten <laughs> note. Oh, hey, listen to this, Frank. Oh. Or I'm Frank. Sorry. Frank. Sam. <laughs> so, I made the same mistake <laughs> earlier. Oh, it's, it's, been, it's been just a crazy day, I'm telling you. <clears throat> oh, anytime with Mrs. Carrington, it's always... <sighs> it's just... Anyway. Mary. Dearest Mary... I don't think you even know me, but I know you. You see, I work at your house. I'm not a gentleman like you deserve, but I'm a good man with strong hands and a good heart. You may think this is sudden, but I have come to care for you. 
I have seen you and watched you when you come to the site, and I wanted to see you again. I have a gift for you that I would like to bring you by your dormitory tomorrow. It's a jewel of some kind that we found where we are building your house, and it's really pretty, like a giant fancy pearl. As you are studying at Miskatonic University, I thought you would think it was interesting. I will be at my room at the Borden Arms tonight and tomorrow, so you can reach me there. With deepest affection, Alfred Hackett. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, doesn't uh, Mrs. Carrington have a daughter named Mary? Yes, she does. This would have to be the same person then, and obviously they may be meeting up here tonight or tomorrow, judging by the look of that. Uh, I, uh, assuming she comes, um, I mean, this is a little creepy. This letter. <laughs> I can't imagine mom being too uh, enthused about this circumstance. I would imagine not. Um, Mrs. Carrington would have, probably would have a cow if she learned her daughter was dating below her class. <laughs> but um, so do you want to take this bucket with us or leave it here? You know, to be honest with you, I'm not not certain we should pull it out of the water. I, I do think we need to take the bucket to the others to examine, but um, yeah, the I've... chances of it deteriorating further if we interfere with it could... Well, I guess it'd be another piece of information, but I do think working with the uh, professor, we should be letting them make those kind of observations. Yeah, yeah. I was—I didn't want to take it out of the bucket. I was going to take the whole bucket. Take the bucket. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and we'll turn to Dorothy and say yes. Unfortunately, we're going to have to confiscate this bucket uh, oh. and its contents. Um, we believe that it was removed from uh, a job site that he's working on. Illegally? Uh, illegally, yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid. So, so he is a criminal. Uh, well, oh. no, no charges have been filed just yet. So oh. it's possible that, um, you know, if he's honest about it, he'll come clean and apologize and then all will be well. But we'll see. Okay. Well, we have a I business, business so. card. I'll. I'll give you Dorothy. Um, oh, thank if you. Mr. Hackett returns, uh, if you could pass that on to him mm -hmm. and uh, have him call us at the soonest opportunity. Oh, I I will let him know. Thank you. All right. Who's carrying the bucket? <laughs> Me. Oh, okay. Don't make Frank carry it. He's got the camera and the bucket. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the other... Unfortunately, cameras back then were really small and easy to carry. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, Frank, give me a dex roll. That's, um, yeah, that's a regular. Yes. All right. You don't slosh water all over your pants legs like, yeah, like I do when I carry buckets <laughs> full of water. <laughs> yeah, you get down to the car, no problem. And uh, are you guys headed back to the university? We are. I have one quick question for Frank first. Frank, what when he mentioned in that letter of pearl, do you think that's something that's this rock, or do you think it's something he's already pulled out of the rock? That's a really good question. I don't know. I think given her a chunk of rock like that's I don't know. If if it's like a jewel, that seems more something smaller, like you'd hold in your hand. That's what I would imagine. Um, but maybe maybe this thing in the bucket is his idea of a jewel. Uh, I'm 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 just Kind of leaving all options open at this point. Um, Might be, uh, yeah, I think it's time to check in with the professor and his students and uh, see if there any of their experiments have yielded any info. But I suspect they'll find this quite interesting. Oh, most definitely. Okay. All right. And with that, we'll hop back over to our uh, academics in uh, at Miskatonic. So you guys were running some uh, tests on the uh, scrapings from the breakpoint and uh, showing off the stuff to your uh, your friends. Yeah, all sorts, you know, microscope, mm -hmm. uh, acid, heat, right. sort of, you know, aqua regina, all of the 
the common tests where you're trying to determine how things what's reactive about the material right is it magnetic is it uh assault is it yeah okay uh through all these tests uh you find you come to one conclusion and uh it's that it's actually uh got like a almost like a organic animal compound to it. Carbon. Yeah. Carbon. Does it have yeah. marks on it like it's been worked by tool or machine? No. Carved anything? No. Does uh, it have layers that look like it's been grown like a seashell? Mm. Over and over again over the years. Uh, not like a seashell, but you know, um, to no, I'll say no. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Uh, shining a light through the translucent limbs. Is there any mm -hmm. structure visible inside? Uh, when you kind of shine a light through it, um. I'm kind of moving it back, you can see that uh, there is like a little bit of a uh, fluid in there that kind of moves back and forth, and there is a solid structure inside floating inside that that liquid. Oh, the shape of the solid inside the fluid. Um, it's described as a blob looking. Oh, so an irregular spheroid. Mm -hmm. uh, Something trapped uh, inside there millions of years ago, maybe. Uh, I think we need to get. Uh, we need to. We need to call someone uh, in the medical wing and get an X-ray on this. Are there more than? Well. Are there more than one of those? Like at the end of each, you said it's like a banana so mm -hmm. at the end of each one of them is there something like that yes look at this yeah it's, this is it's like so, each one is individual no, like, so it's it's and it's it's it i'm trying to think about what plastic i mean you know there have been you know we have bakelite people have been using organics to make you know, to mold things. You know, you take enough tissue and the right acids and whatnot, and you can make it a shape. But this is extremely complex to trap a fluid inside there, unless it's an incomplete reaction. Uh, I'd like to uh, analyze, you know, assuming we haven't got our chemist uh, in yet, you know, we're doing work while we're waiting for... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to take uh, a scraping of, of the distal, the far end of the mother of pearl bit, and a scraping from the from the coral side of it, and compare them under a microscope if they're similarly structured. I mean, ah, okay. Um, as you're looking, you can see similarities in it, but they are definitely. Definitely different. different. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do there appear to be things that I would recognize as cells? Yes. Uh, do the cells have visible nuclei, or are they? Is it and or are they? Is it more like just little chambers, like honeycomb? Uh, no, it has nuclei. And are they moving? Are these cells? No. Like, this is a the strangest fossil or um yeah is it like petrified wood um interesting you know siliconized or uh maybe over millions of years it's the carbon's been replaced by almost diamond like stuff it's interesting about I mean, this that, could be a, oh. an incredibly rare fossil. About that time, you have a knock on the door, and you see uh, 
Prof Professor Sanford, he uh, sticks his head in. He's like going, um, yeah, I just realized the name I picked out. <laughs> he, uh, he's like going, oh, you were uh, looking for someone from the astronomy department? Indeed, Sanford, kind of you to come. It's like, oh, well, you know, uh, it was uh, office hours and uh, not a lot of students were uh, coming by. So we've found the uh, darndest thing, mm -hmm. uh, a, a very peculiar organic. Well, I'll show you over here. This this object just showed up uh, <laughs> across town sometime in the wee hours this morning. Uh -huh. uh, and it 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 smashed into a marble fountain and did some damage to it. And I wondered if there was anything like a meteor shower or anyone had spotted a comet of late or any other thing that could correlate. Huh. He's like, this. he goes, oh. Well, there was a... Uh... A scene, uh, shooting stars last last night, possibly, uh, but it didn't didn't go near Arkham. It headed out. It it was estimated that it probably went out to the salt marshes out east. Oh, oh! Did, was there any indication that any solids uh, survived the burn? Uh, we haven't really followed up on it. It was just a report from uh, one of the amateur stargazers that we uh, sometimes that we query every day to see if they've uh, seen anything. Yeah. How far out to the east, roughly? Oh, uh, out to the east. So oh, it's just uh, probably about about six miles outside of town. Uh huh. Now I don't. Um, wouldn't these. Uh objects enter the atmosphere they tend to burn up sometimes they break into pieces yeah that they that they do yes yes which is is fortunate because if they didn't they'd be they'd be quite destructive when they hit have you seen the uh seen pictures of the crater out in arizona it's astonishing yeah. yes so if if uh if bits calved off like from a glacier could they could smaller bits have landed in some sort of array around you know around that the main center yeah uh, it's always possible of course i mean you know like they like said we'd have to uh we're we're planning to do a little research see if we could find find where it where it landed and all and we'll be able to give you a better answer there but since it was just last night you know, you understand that we don't have a lot of data on it Certainly, quite. If something calved off that weighed 60 or 70 pounds. Oh, that'd be quite massive. It would cause a great deal of destruction, right? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It'd be, uh, I, I'd have to run the numbers, but I imagine it'd be almost uh, look like, uh, you know, Verdun, you know, uh, just massive damage. Uh, 60 yeah. 70 pounds is uh falling falling from space that's a, a lot of uh kinetic energy yeah because even if it disperses into what are the smaller pieces bolides they they retain that the, yeah all that velocity kinetic, right mm -hmm. curious yeah. it must be a coincidence then but uh if you'd like to look at this odd thing oh i i'd, I'd, I'd love to it, yeah Giving me the shivers. Hmm. Goes over and you know, he asks you what kind of tests you've uh, you've done on it and everything, and he's like, "Hmm. Well, it's it's not iron. You no, I think it's actually organic. It's got a a lot of carbon. And look at the little bubbles carbon. of what look like liquid. Um. So he kind of goes there, and when he kind of like. Moves it, another one breaks off. Oh, like, oh, oh uh, uh, sorry. It, I, it I, tests, I barely handled it. <laughs> yeah, it's odd. It tests at, at corundum level hardness uh, down on the bottom part, but the top seems mm. to be rather 
easy to fracture. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely a liquid in there. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the little shape, if you hold it up to the light, does it look like anything in particular? Um, no, like a blob. I mean, it, if you kind of, if I hold it this way it, it yeah. oozes down but it still keeps this kind of uh somewhat somewhat circular shape in there i suppose we um, need to get a needle in there and draw that fluid out we'd have to drill um uh you, you don't think this fell out of the sky huh it just doesn't look like anything that fell out of the sky uh the amount of damage you described kind of encourages me leads me to know he's like on oh, but you know um uh, i'll i'll look through some of our other uh meteorites uh that we have here uh, at, at miskatonic and see, see if anything uh has it on there I'll, 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 I'll review some records and i'll get back with you the shape is so irregular maybe it would slow down the if a, if a larger structure broke and they spun yeah, I'm, I'm grasping at straws, but the thing yeah, is damned weird. Yes, it, it is. It is very weird. I, I really appreciate you uh, letting me know about this, Mr. Parker. That was wonderful. We we'll almost have to land in a big net. Mm. You know, to, yeah, if it crashed to through a dense forest at an angle, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, well... Uh, uh, yeah, if if you if you have any notions or if uh, other pieces are found, I mean there might be an array of these things that landed in the marshes in particular with no uh, one here. And no one, no one's out there, and you know they could uh, could land, and no one would know know about it. <laughs> maybe that's uh, maybe that that's uh, where those uh, those old rumors of the old marsh wizard comes from you remember uh, if you, i don't know if your mother used to tell you those uh those mm. spooky stories to get you to go to bed at night i'm actually uh, uh not local oh so. oh every town has their local boogeyman you know ours ours is the marsh wizard that will if you don't go to bed he'll come out with his flying dragon and snatch you away that's the metaphysics department we're not <laughs> we're scientists yeah. not into the occult yeah um, <laughs> you know professor there's another possibility the possibility that this is completely unrelated to her damn fountain you know yeah. that uh, yeah i didn't think just, it had anything to do with the fountain honestly Maybe one of the guys knocked over her statue and they're just blaming it on this weird fossil they found. I don't know. I mean, if they were excavating and they dug something like this up and also they knocked over one of her tacky statues she had knocked off by some struggling artist. But the coincidence is the confusing part yeah it doesn't make sense no uh but i want to uh get a fresh drill bit and draw out some of that fluid and see if we've got liquid amber okay let me find you try to open it mm -hmm. Any all Let's right somebody from the engineering department <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, when you start drilling in, and it, it takes a little bit to, to get a bit and everything, you start right when you're about ready to start drilling in. That's when uh, Frank and Sam show show up because, you know, you had to have the conversation with the Professor Sanford and all. You're getting ready to uh, fire, fire up the drill with this uh, ridiculous uh, electrical cord that you would have used in the 1920s and uh that's when frank and sam also come in and frank's carrying a bucket <laughs> oh hey <clears throat> i got something for you to look at so alfred did take uh, it yeah did. poor kid we couldn't find him but we found it so we'll start with yeah. that at least all the pieces are together again 
Uh, oh yeah, we've got another piece too. The thing, an, another another chunk snapped off. It doesn't. It seems strong enough for what it wants to be, and then a piece just snaps off. Interesting. So, well, why is it in a bucket? We found it we, this way. We don't know. But it, well, it's, have a have a look. It it's changed its uh, appearance it's changed quite its a bit. Color, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Spot tests. We didn't get much with acid or water or mm. maybe submersion. Why would he think to submerge it in water? That's the strangest thing. You know, Frank. Maybe show him the note too. Maybe yeah. he was trying to clean it and then ended up washing <laughs> off the outer. Uh, looks like he has big big plans for it anyways. His... Yeah, he was trying to impress a girl. Oh, yeah, we heard about that in the household. It's not going to go well. Oh, <laughs> did you know? Yeah, um, apparently he's going to present her, we think, this jewel in an attempt to win her over. The, the thing that we have seen in Shadow doesn't look very jewel-like, but maybe... And so he he wasn't there. He just he he wasn't. He he had let this note mentions that he's going to be back later tonight and then tomorrow and and for her to drop in. But I don't know. We left him a card and and perhaps he'll give us a call. We can check back in later. But um... Miss Marsh, you're not familiar with the lady in question. No, I no, I don't know. Yeah. Does we'll have to. Yeah, I, I, I'll uh, get on the, Brown. Yeah. I'll get on the horn to the registrar and find out what year she is and what she studies. That's if, quite the tool of destruction you have there. Are you hey, looking yeah, at the drill? We're we're going to find out. There's a liquid inside. We're going to find out what it is. Uh, this thing appears to. <clears throat> It, it, it it's it's organic so it's not properly speaking the stone uh and uh there is a possibility that something uh was something was something was visible in the sky last night some sort of falling star uh so it might not be a coincidence uh right so yeah i'll just uh i feel i'm gonna um put each end of the broken piece in a vice mm -hmm. and uh, Wallace I'll let you do the heavy lifting of course okay so uh, start drilling into it uh, you know it makes this horrible like grinding noise it's uh, quite loud but there's not sparks flying off of it like when you're cutting tile or and uh, collecting go... the scrapings in a beaker yeah. Right. And uh as you as you press in there, Wallace, uh you know when you, if you're drilling through something and you get through and it's hollow underneath that the drill suddenly goes jabbing jabbing into it and uh then you you feel it hit the other side, so you surmise that you're inside the cavity inside the uh rock. Is there any smell suddenly? uh sulfur organic yes it smells very it smells like yellowstone like when you're around mm. those sulfur pits yeah like rotten eggs yep mm. my god well um i've got i've got uh i've got the shavings so we can look at those and if you'll tip it into another vessel we can have a look at the fluid. Try not to pour off too much. It will cork it. All right. It might, it smells as though it, maybe it's been anoxic for a long period. So yeah. it we might change rapidly. Make sure we're wearing protection because there could be ancient germs, yeah, you know, well, from the Mesozoic germs, era. Ancient germs will succumb to our modern methods. Okay. Right, so you kind of Bollock acid. All right. So you collect up the fluid. All right. 
scooting that to a microscope right away. Mm -hmm. See if there are cells in that as well. Okay. Um, do you have any biology? Only chemistry, really. We probably have high school and yeah yeah Bi biology, chemistry chemistry would probably cover it yeah and chemistry. again a lot of natural world so yeah yeah yeah. at least a broad general i got a 69 on my biology which i is... got a six on okay. if we say and that's for chemistry that's an extreme okay and it's better um, for a natural world Look at what these are called. Okay, so when you uh, look at that, um, I'm blanking on what the word word is, but the white part of an egg. What albumin? Albumin. Albumin. Yeah. Ah, I would have been right. So <laughs> 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 well, that's the closest thing you can come up with. That it's like albumin. Egg. We have. Dinosaur eggs. You're fucking kidding me. <laughs> that have been. Yeah, I mean, this the shape is... of this thing is so wrong, though. But if this is a, a, a substance meant to fuel the growth of an egg, then the blobs in there are eggs. Um, I mean, there's been some very strange occurrences. Um, I've heard of frogs that were encased in coal in the bottoms of coal mines that must have been there for a million years. And when they're open, the frog rehydrates, and it's extremely rare. But so, these if could this be fossilized eggs that are still viable, if this is the white of the egg, what's the yolk? If you if you hold one of these up to light, you can see there's a blobby wow. bit that that's in there. It's such a strange shape to be. I mean, it's certainly not a well, reptile reptile structure. Mister Eckhart, you said the neighbors reported an odd squawking noise. A squawk. <laughs> Could it be some kind of bird flying overhead that would drop this over? No, no, it just it's so heavy. It's a rock. It's God. it's yeah. definitely it's not a rock. We've got a, a pterodactyl flying around uh <laughs> just dropping laying, eggs. laying laying eggs over the neighborhood. You know, the, there's that um <laughs> Charles Fort fellow who publishes articles about raining frogs and you know, the backwoods of Arkansas and so on. Maybe this is something uh, from Sumatra or something. It's too heavy to have been airborne it's, it's for any length of time. It's too heavy, yes. Frogs are fairly light, after all. It can be blown about. I, uh, I, I'm willing to guess that this did not fall out of the sky. This... This was put there by somebody. It's just doesn't make any sense. But it was put very right. violently. Unless it's a coincidence that something else smashed up the fountain. Well, we we you know, the the possibility that the construction workers accidentally destroyed the fountain and are blaming this, something that they may have just found. And then our friend Alfred ran off with one part of it and yeah. he soaked it in water. And he thinks it's got a jewel, which that's, we think is. That's what's got me worried. Uh, Frank, maybe bring the bucket over. We should see if that yeah. one still has the proverbial yolk inside. Yeah, we didn't. I didn't stick my hand in the water. Nope. Uh, there are, there are thick uh, latex gloves over there. You want me to pull it out? Sure. We'll hold it up to. Okay. I've got a nice light here. Bright okay. lamp. I'll get. Uh, those long gloves. Mm -hmm. And and Frank, when you pick it up, because it's going to catch you kind of off guard, give me like a dex check. Ooh, that is a, uh, a failure by two. So I will spend the luck to, to right. make that. 
All right. So what happened when you lift it, when you lift it up and you're bringing it over, it shifts like the weight inside of it shifts. And so that's why you almost dropped it because you weren't expecting it to suddenly at center of gravity to shift on you like that. Hmm. And does it, does it feel solid or is it like kind of like jello wobbly? It, it, the outside feels solid. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're right there, Frank. Yeah, I just it, it the the weight shifted inside it, and I was caught off guard. How we, uh, how's the weight in comparison to the rest of the maybe the other one that broke off that we looked at? It is heavier. Yeah, I'll I'll put it. If you've got a scale, we'll weigh this thing. Mm hmm. Oh, when you set it down, you notice there's a crack in it. I, I point to the crack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. You know, it, it must have absorbed water in that bucket. I wonder what inspired Alfred to soak the damn thing. That's a good question. It's a good question. I don't know. And then you see the, uh, lack of a better term, the shell start to kind of like, like something pushing against it, and it kind of breaks oh. open. Okay, step back, everyone. I'm backing up. You, uh, this little beak, <laughs> this beak comes out, and, ah, ah, and you know, <laughs> you know, when birds hatch out of eggs, how they kind of just break the shell away from from it. And uh, out comes this, uh, as it gets out, this about the size of a, you know, a, a newborn kitten. Uh, it's got a uh, front, four, four legs and hind legs. At the end of the legs are uh, claws. They kind of look like cat claws. The uh, front of it, though, it's got a, it's definitely a beak. You don't see any eyes. And it has uh, wings, and its skin is, uh, there's not feathers on the skin, but uh, there's not scales either. So it's like, uh, you know, like a, a, a skin, but, you know, of a grayish color. But it's got four legs and yep. wings? Yep, four legs and wings. Okay, that doesn't fall into any animal category. That might be sanity check time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll give um, I I quickly grab a large beaker mm -hmm. and put the thing in the bottom of the beaker. Okay. If you uh, fail your sanity, it's only one. If you pass, it's, it's zero just because you're like, you guys were kind of already, yeah, these are eggs. And, but, I think yeah, it would be weird. But... <laughs> weird thing came out. <laughs> I mean, it's got the morphology of a mythic animal, like a griffin or, you know, but oh technically gosh. wings are, you know. Arms. Yes. Arms. The, good, the good news is the damn thing's blind, so you should have no trouble trapping it. It must be some kind of horrible mutation. I've, I've put it in this uh, this beaker. Thanks. A, a big beaker, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can put it in a a fish tank or something. Yeah, and it's constantly making that. Call uh, Professor... <laughs> Dumbledore from the uh, biology department. Oh, the biology department. There, he does. He does have a name. <laughs> uh, it is a Doctor Bryden, Carl Bryden. I'm going to run over to his classroom and grab him. Okay, he's in the middle of class. Uh, he is in a. He is in office hours. When you get there. You see he's uh, talking almost a little friendlier than you'd like to see with this uh, girl. She's probably about a sophomore. But, boy, she looks like Mrs. Carrington, a younger Mrs. Carrington. Oh, this must be the daughter. Um, 
I'm sorry, Professor Brighton. Brighton. Yeah, Brighton. Brighton. Uh, Professor Bryden, Professor oh, oh, Bryden. Oh, oh, uh, uh, and as you can see there, Mary, uh, if we, uh, the cells, they will, uh, oh, yeah, yes, yes. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you mm -hmm. for a look. Um, <laughs> there's, there's something you need to see now. Oh, I, I do? What, what is it? I'll, I'll explain on the way. You're going to okay. flip your lid. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, uh, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, come, come along. This would be a good good lesson for you, you too, Miss uh, Carrington. So we we found something. Uh, we we thought prehistoric eggs, but one of them hatched. What? Yeah. By by now, uh, I'm I'm rushing well, him. Yeah, uh, your your ge geology. You, you must. I th thought you could could date things when when you were in geology, not not we, be off by a so few thousand years. The damn thing is rock, <laughs> and it's opened up, and there is a baby chicken cat or something. We don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, okay, of of course, of course. And um, he follows you into there. When he opens the door, he's like, kind of steps back. He's like, "Oh my!" He's like, "Going, I, I, I feel like the uh, Europeans the first time they saw a duck-billed platypus. It seems almost like it'd be fake, but it's moving, and it doesn't look like a reptile or a mammal or a bird or a no." We don't know how to feed it, but there might be others that have already. Is it breathing air? Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's constantly it's... making that squawking right. noises. So, like, got lungs. Yeah. Could I pull Frank aside for a second? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. When a baby bird hatches or something like that, and it starts squawking like that, you know why it squawks like that, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's hungry and it wants its mother. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and um, you know, if we assume, probably correctly, that we have several of these, how big do you think this thing gets? That's a good question. I just hope we're not about to find out. <laughs> I wonder what it eats. <laughs> And with that comment, uh, Dr. Bryden, he's kind of reaching and the thing snaps and he pulls his finger back just at the last second. It, it took a, oh, you know, if he hadn't had the quick reflexes that he would uh, be known as Dr. Nine Fingers after that. I, I wonder if it's imprinted on Professor Max, Professor Hilliard. Maybe it thinks Hilliard's his mom. I'm not sure any one of us was singled out enough for that. But who did it uh, see first? Uh, hey, probably so Frank, because he was the one that was kind of setting it down. <laughs> Frank, come here. Stick your finger over here. What, 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 no, well, let's, don't just, be ridiculous. No, 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 no. I mean, it might snap at you, but then again, it might not. I might, I think it might think you're its mom. First of all, it must be echolocating. It doesn't have eyes. Or it was just snapping blindly, literally. Again, this thing doesn't morphologically make any sense. But we can offer it something to eat, but we're not going to have Frank or anyone else stick their finger near it. <laughs> that beak looks damn sharp. Uh, put the... Uh, I, I know what that beaker weighs. Put it on this scale. We'll see how much this thing weighs. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh when you put it on there, uh, you get a uh, weight of about five pounds. Gracious. Like a kitten. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more than a few a months. A few months in. A puppy. Uh, does it appear to have any genitals? Or uh, are there, are there indications of memories? Uh, you don't see any uh, any of any of that, but, you know. Skin text, or fur. The texture it, of the skin, skin is very strange. Skin, yeah. It it's, it's skin, skin looks rough. Um, 
It's described in here as rough and almost reptilian, but not scaly. Hmm. So amphibian, maybe like a frog. It doesn't seem wet, though. Well, maybe I mean, wants... except for the newbornness. Um, uh, Doctor Bryden said, kind of looking at it, he's like, it's quite fascinating. And he's like, going, we, I, we may have discovered a new species. Did did uh, Mary come in with the professor? Yes. Ah, oh, funny to meet you again so soon, Miss Carrington. Oh, you were the ones that were at my mother's uh, vacation house. Yeah, this little fella, maybe you can name it for us. I think it's the jewel that Alfred wanted to give you. Alfred, oh, that uh, that love, uh, love lost uh, construction worker, huh? Yes, he he's a he's a sweet man. He said that he had uh, take it. He made several drafts of that note, and that the one he, one he gave me was his uh, magnum opus. He mm -hmm. didn't use those words, of course, but. Mm. Uh, I hated to string. I hate to string string a man along, but it's it's so hard. I just can't be like my mother and so rude. Mm. Uh, 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 so do you do you plan? Did you plan to meet with him? Oh, uh, I was talking to Carl. I mean, Doctor Br Bryden here, and uh, we he was interested in uh, possibly seeing this uh, this i item that he had because. Who's who's ever heard of a pearl as large as someone's head? <laughs> no. But but yeah. yeah, just to uh I mean I hate to say it, just to uh out of curiosity, not out of any uh affection. Oh, it yeah. doesn't seem as though you even know mm -hmm. the poor Assad. Uh but we need to find him. Uh, perhaps. Mm. Why well, I, I have his address. Yeah, she yeah. gives you the same address that you guys. Thank you, Miss Carrington. The question is where he went between putting this in a bucket. Mm. Peculiar. Um, can we? Uh, I guess I'll call the biology department and ask for a cage. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bryden, Dr. 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 Bryden, he works right. in biology. He, yeah. Like, yeah, well, I, I, I'll I, definitely have uh, one of my uh, my students bring one down. Get a TA to get a dog cage, uh, maybe a couple of them, and we'll need some, we'll need to try some food on it. I assume there are a bunch of white mice available. Oh, and a of bunch course. Of Course. food for them so we can see whether it prefers the lettuce and carrots or the white mice themselves mm -hmm. let's start with the lettuce and carrots <laughs> goes, uh, it looks like a meat eater yeah I, i'm i'm pretty sure you know see how it's beak it's almost like a, a vulture and vultures you know they're they their beaks evolved that way so they could tear meat off of uh we haven't eaten lunch yet. I'm going to run over and grab my, my sack lunch, <laughs> which we'll say is a turkey sandwich. Ah, uh, yes. I, okay. I, I'm not going to do it with my fingers. I'm going to eat okay. it. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> okay. Dangs oh, it uh, over his mouth. Uh, it, it does uh, grab the turkey very quickly and... Uh, a, you know, like a, a dog when you give it a treat, how they almost Gobbles. don't even taste it. <laughs> does the beak have nostrils in it? It does not. How is it sensing that meat? Does the damn thing, I mean, it's squawking, but it can't be echolocating. Maybe it's at a frequency we can't hear. Um. It should be blind as anything. But usually cave creatures, when they go blind, they lose their pigment. And this thing, I mean, it's... Maybe, it, maybe its eyes just haven't opened yet. Maybe it's sensing it know the, the meat's light. there. Maybe it's just sensing the movement. You know, it's it's light okay. sensitive. We need to get... Um, 
these things locked down. Uh, yeah. You're, yeah. Now, I was I thought you were being silly earlier, Parker, when you talked about ancient bacteria, but this thing was alive. Hmm. Who knows what it's got in it? I mean, it's defined in the century. Yes, Brian. Yeah. But Mr. Right, Eckhart, I... the neighbors reported a squawking noise last night. <sighs> I have concerned. concerns yeah. that there are more of these. That something flew over and dropped this egg? Eggs? Yeah. Cluster and of eggs? More than likely, Mum may have some way of finding her way back to her young, and I'm not sure what happens then. Well, well, she can hear through walls. Or more of them have just hatched or something. I, I don't know. I don't think we can guess what she can or can't do. We can't determine th these things can hear at all. It's, do we know the direction of... of Oh, that's information I don't have. Actually, we do. If yeah. it's making the squawking noise, then they can hear. Or they can feel yeah. the vibrations in the air. Not much mm -hmm. point in squawking if you're deaf. But mm -hmm. if she's just dropping the eggs off somewhere, she's not interested in nesting. So she's not coming back to feed the babies. Do the Are the wings, uh, are they unfolding? Does it seem to have any lift? It's awfully heavy yeah. to fly. Uh, yeah, the the wings do look like they would be able to to fly with it with some development. Yeah, I think we want about three dog cages in different sizes, <laughs> and we want somebody with nice thick asbestos gloves to try to move this thing because I don't want to get it anywhere near those claws or that beak. As to um, Theodora's yeah. point, if there are other places where it possibly uh, dropped eggs, do we have any type of trajectory or guesswork of how we could plot a course of... <laughs> Professor Sanford has uh, an idea about a falling star seen in the marshes in the east. So there is work being done on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, all of you... Because you all saw the fountain, you can all give me a navigate. What did I do? Navigate. Not a oh, no. Oh, 20. No. 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 74. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, with that mystery, mysterious roll there, we will go ahead and uh, we should be about a at our uh, stopping time? Yeah, oh. two hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, our players included David Gasway, Julian Arba, Mike McKen, Holly Buto, and myself with Keith Craig as the Keeper of Arcane Lore. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you would like to join them, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description. Or you can gift the show. Uh, uh, you can show us your appreciation by hitting the super thanks button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh together with all the members of our gaming club inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming. Mm -hmm.